Let me give you the key phrase of tonight. God wants us to see and understand what he has called us to do. He wants you to see it. He wants you to understand it because he's called you to it. Can you imagine that if he called the priest to go into the holy place and there, there was no menorah in there and he's like, do the altar of incense and they're out. You know, you think you're lighting the altar and it's another priest going, hey man, you just lit my talit on fire. <laughs> Sorry about that, man. I was, it's dark in here. You know, table of showbread and putting things where they don't belong. What if you put the, the showbread on the altar of incense? Now you got a lovely smell, but it's the wrong thing. God wants you to see and understand what he's called you to do. God has never shown a history where he wants you to walk in darkness or confusion. Never. Will I not reveal to my servant Abraham what I'm about to do? Do I not tell my prophets what I'm about to do ahead of time? Did I not give you the book of Revelation and the prophets so that you would know what was coming? Satan's, one of his biggest lies is to try to convince us that God is hiding something. And all the while, God is saying, I'm hiding nothing. I'm trying to give my kingdom away. I'm trying to give my creation away. I'm hiding nothing. And that's what the menorah represents. He's not hiding anything. He wants you to see everything you're called to do. We're called to engage with God in this. So now we can see three distinct elements in the menorah. The seven branches symbolizing God's perfection and his completion. The almond branches symbolizing that God has brought Israel to life and that he is watching over them for their protection and judgment. The lighting of the space of the holy place, again, so that the priest could see what they were called to do. So how does all of this relate to you? You say, it's great, it's a decoration, I'm not part of the tabernacle, I'm not there, maybe it meant something to them in the ancient days, but I don't connect to the symbolism here, Pastor. Ephesians chapter two, verse one. As for you, notice it didn't say, as for the old people, as for you, you were dead in your transgressions and your sins in which you used to live when you followed the ways of this world and of the ruler of the kingdom of the air, the spirit who is now at work in those who are disobedient. All of us also lived among them at one time, gratifying the cravings of our flesh and following its desires and thoughts. Like the rest, we were by nature deserving wrath, but because of his great love for us, God, who is rich in mercy, made us alive with the Messiah even when we were dead in transgressions. It is by grace you have been saved. He is saying, did you not see the menorah? You were dead in your sin, but I'm the God of resurrection. Don't let this pass by you without grabbing it. Remember, you are the temple. You need to understand what you are. You are a symbol that God resurrects things from the dead. That's what you are. It's not all you are. You're also a symbol that God sees. God watches. Nothing gets past him. Romans 2, 6. God will repay each person according to what they have done. Revelation 22, 12. Look, I am coming soon. My reward is with me, and I will give to each person according to what they have done. 2 Chronicles 16, 9. For the eyes of the Lord range throughout the earth to strengthen those whose hearts are fully committed to him. Proverbs 5, 21, for your ways are in full view of the Lord and he examines all of your paths. Proverbs 15, 3, the eyes of the Lord are everywhere, keeping watch on the wicked and the good. He wants you to understand the menorah. He is a God who watches. He's a God who sees. He's a God who acts. And he's a God of the resurrection. 